Welcome everybody. Uh, a little slow start to the Saturday show. I apologize for that. But <clears throat> normally I go over John's, but he had some things to take care of, I suppose. And I was going to work on the Ringmaster, but that's not going to happen today. So we're going to work on uh, the Tucker. Let me pull out this uh, chat box so I can make sure to see you guys. All right, that's uh, about the best I'm going to do with that. Okay, I had uh, I had said that I was going to build a, a Tucker XL uh, just for the simple fact that that uh, I like the look of the Tucker Special. Where the hell's my hat? There, nope, can't figure that out. There we are. I like the look of the Tucker Special. So what I'm going to do is I I have my my uh, Junar here. That 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 airplane flies excellent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the numbers from this and make it look like my Tucker. So I'm going to take this airplane here. Basically, we're going to We're going to build this airplane here to look like this airplane here. Make sure you can see that. So basically, the wing is going to stay the same as the XL, and the elevators will stay the same as the XL. We'll just change the look of the fuselage with the exact same numbers. Now, I had been I had been kicking around the thought of using my PA75 in the airplane, but I don't know. I I just don't like all that weight. So I'm going to be using the same engine that's in that airplane only with the Brian Gardner uh, ABC liner in it. I have a couple liners. Uh, it uses less fuel and it's about an ounce lighter plus I don't have a pipe and all the other rigmarole that's going on even though I do have the light muffler for the uh, PA-75 and uh, you know the PA-75 would be set up like so I don't know. Bigger prop, bigger, more fuel, bigger, bigger, bigger. So anyway, let's get to it. What do you guys want to see me build first? Because this airplane is just an idea right now. It, it's nothing. I haven't cut a piece of wood. Well, I did cut a few sludge sides, excuse me. This this is the uh, fuselage side. Could be built either way. But I selected my wood for the airplane. And that's the way it... This pile of wood here will turn into a giant tucker. So let's see what this pile of wood weighs. Weighs 11 ounces. 10.95 ounces. So I hope there's enough I know there's enough material here to do this job. So, mark in the chat box. What do you want to see? Want me to build first? Rudder, elevator, stabilizer, 
fuselage or the wing and we'll get started there and I'll show you how I come up with this stuff <laughs> it's real simple and I'll wait a few minutes while you guys figure out I'm looking at the chat box now so go ahead type it in there what do you want to see Looks like a mad scientist uh, workbench. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Now there was somebody that said that they couldn't send me a super chat, that their super chat wasn't working. Well, you can go to Stunhanger and, and drop a tip at the uh, the donate button or whatever and but super chats really help the channel and I would like to see this channel grow and we grow about anywhere between one and two pe people a day believe it or not so type in the chat box what you want to see what to see me build stab elevators rudders fuselage wing whatever we'll get started as soon as somebody types something in there we can start anywhere it doesn't matter but somebody's gonna have to type something in I did cut the spars too already so I lied I said I didn't cut any wood I cut four sticks for the wing spars there we go we got somebody typing something in All right, Mike. <clears throat> Mike says, since I have the fuselage sides cut, let's start with that. Okay, two fuselage sides. Let's look through the wood here and see where we've got some eighth inch. It's a piece of, uh, I don't know, it's not A grain, kind of a C grain. Piece of eighth inch. That's what we're going to use as doublers. So I haven't made any doublers yet. Now, what I did for these fuselage sides is I glued them together, tacked them on the ends, and sanded them to the exact same shape. I also have a wing plug somewhere. Oh, there it is. Now, I, I took the rib set and sanded a, a wing rib, so to speak, and sheeted it with the 332nd that I normally use. Jack Snavely says he'd like to see the wing. Well, we'll, we'll be showing everything. But anyway, I cut, sanded, and fit that hole so that it fits perfectly. So that when I cut this fuselage apart at the high point of the wing, I don't have any filling, any nonsense of shimming or whatever. Just the wing will fit in there perfectly. So that's how I do that. So let's cut the sides apart. You'll notice here that I leave a little step. I leave a step here. And this is where the muffler comes out. So you don't have to fill and glue and you have to figure all this stuff out ahead of time. But the needle valve will come out right there at the corner. And the muffler will come out right there. See how that works? It just makes a lot cleaner airplane. 
And I basically do that on all my stuff. So I got glue mark there and a glue mark there. If you'll notice here, I put glue. Well, I do that. <laughs> I do that when I lay them out. But that was the wrong mark, so now it's got no glue, and I have big scribe marks in there. So we need to make two doublers, one for each side. If we do this right, I'll get my uh, stringers out of this too. I'm going to build it, build this basically exactly as the Tucker special was done. Oh, I don't need to go back that far. better like that. It would be better like that. Okay, that's one laid out. So the reason why I, I mark these is I've built a lot of airplanes and, and anybody that has built a lot of airplanes has made mistakes. So we're going to mark this number one right here, glue. Number one, glue. That way you don't have any problems when you're go to put them together. So we'll turn this over to the other side. High point of the wing. What have I done here? See, I've almost made a mistake. I did make a mistake. This is... Uh, backwards. So let's do this. Seeing that I already have it marked. You know, I don't hardly make these mistakes when I'm doing this off camera by myself. Okay, so there we go. I think I will cut that out and get it glued on, or not glued, but uh, just so I don't make that mistake. I don't want to. I don't want to end up making any goofy mistakes.
Put a new blade in this. For you guys that build a lot, I do have X-Acto knives, but the cheaper alternative is go on Amazon and buy number 11 scalpel blades with the handle. You get 100 blades for $6 delivered. You didn't have to go out. And you're not going to cut any plywood with this stuff. These blades that I'm using are Via Med Surgical Blades, number 11. Right here. About nine bucks, or six bucks. The only thing is, you can't, uh, you can't push real hard on something. So like I say, you're not going to be cutting plywood with them. And be careful changing them, because they'll cut you. <laughs> Kind of wish I'd had these when I was a kid. When I was a kid, we used double-edged razor blades in a matchbook. You break out the striker, and you cut the paper off the striker, and you slide the blade into the matchbook, and then <laughs> cut parts out. Guys okay, got it too easy. Okay, one piece. We'll get this laid up and I'll start uh, cutting ribs and laying out, well, I'll lay out the leading edge bucks. This square was given to me by my dad, who his dad gave it to him. This is the oddest. I've never seen another mini square like it, and I'll show you here in a second what it can do. It ain't no Chinese square. Okay, we got one piece done. Oh. Glue. Glue. I didn't I didn't finish cutting the muffler spot out. That's okay, we can always take wood off. It's hard to put it back.
Now the last tucker that I built, I, I said that I would work an hour a day. Well, I'm not sure that's how this, this one's going to go. I'd like to have it done before the Nationals, but, you know, we're cutting it pretty close. If I wasn't working, no problem. But seeing as that I'm working, I'm using somebody else's shop to, to paint in. I'm kind of at their mercy. I can't get it done. That's right. If it gets done, it gets done. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Okay. Inboard. Okay, so now we got to do this, this one here. I don't want to leave this piece long so I can reuse it. So let's trim that off. Let's see what we got here. Fourteen viewers and three likes. There should be fourteen thumbs up buttons there. Thumbs up on the video. Um, Okay, so, oh, I wanted to show you what this square does. Have you guys ever seen a combination square that does this? I mean, it's the coolest thing. Got a patent number, it's a Stanley, but it's old. Okay. So let's cut this straight. Hey, I want to tell you guys, I went to the store yesterday. To get my weekly groceries, well, I only got two rolls of toilet paper left, so I figured, well, okay, I'll pick up a couple of rolls. Not, there was not a roll in Walmart. There was not a roll of toilet paper left on the shelf. I got to tell you, for you knuckleheads you, <laughs> who think the apocalypse is coming, the end of the world, you're not going to shit yourself to death. Okay, we can make a couple of stringers out of that, so that'll work. Okay.
Well, I got, I mean, I only use about maybe, maybe two rolls a month. <laughs> maybe, that's on the outside. So I got other stuff I can use. I might call this the uh, Corona Tea. Okay, so we'd like to have the uh, cuts in the, about the same spot. If you'll notice this this piece of wood, this piece of eighth inch was kind of heavy, 43 grams for a uh, four by eight by 36. So it wasn't, you know, wasn't the best piece of wood. But we don't need that. We need something that's going to double, you know, for the engine, hold the engine. We used to use plywood in the old days, but. The problem with plywood is when you sand up at the nose, it's kind of rough. It makes a hardwood line. I don't have any weights here, but I do have some aircraft books I can set on these while they dry, while they dry. And we'll start working on the crutch. Which is not a big deal. I mean I could go through the Wait till next weekend, go over John's and whittle out the engine bearers and all that, but I don't know. Is that necessary? No idea. I just, they canceled the Toledo show. I just hope they don't cancel Joan All, the Nats. Okay, I talked about this once before. Cross cut grain, use a back saw. Makes a lot cleaner cut. We still alive? John Suklak. We I am going to build a giant tucker using my XL numbers to look like a tucker special. There's a couple of reasons for that. See the, the XL that I have flies so good. It's 58 ounces. 
the power plant works perfect. I wish I'd have flown it last year at the Nats instead of my other one, but I let Charles borrow it. Okay. Two, two glue. I did end up with a line on it, but what can I say? We'll sand that off, see what happens. It's on the inside, doesn't matter. It's just 320. Clean up the uh, clean up the edges. It's a bummer. You don't. I don't have any power tools over here. Of course, the other Tucker was all built by hand too. So far, I've built four airplanes out of this little hotel room type thing, plus four flying wings, so eight airplanes. No, that's, that's wrong. Nine airplanes, because my ringmasters, I took towed it over John's, but uh, it's not done. Okay, so we have fuselage cut. Now, I don't believe all this plywood, all this aircraft ply is all that necessary. So what I'm going to do on this model, is I'm going to use uh, light ply for F2. F1 will be, uh, will be aircraft ply, that's be 3 8 by whatever width it is. So let's see the motor mounts that I had. Um, well, I know I got them somewhere. Okay, three eighths by half maple. Let's see what length they are. And if I had access to some power tools, I I could make stuff lighter where I would grind a taper in these and all that. But I don't. So we're gonna go with what we can. Let's see here. However, I will be using my titanium for motor mount pads. This here is a fixture, drill jig fixture for Super Tiger 60. 
Jim Lee sells these. They're about 25 bucks. You can hardly go wrong for that. I don't think I have an Allen wrench that size here. Matter of fact, I know I don't. What am I going to do? Well, I guess. Let's see here. Gotta make do with what I got. I had a miter box here. I don't know where the heck that went. There it is. You say, what's the miter box for? I'll show you. Okay. Just had that. What happened there? Yeah. No. There it is. Okay. Want to leave a little room between the bears so that you can cock the engine. At least I do. So it looks like it's one and a half. Yep. One and a half. So now, I've got some half inch, basically rock hard stuff, so you don't want to use too much of this. We're going to uh, saw some pieces one and a half. Okay, let's see where one and a half comes to. Hmm. I'd like to put a stop on there. Okay, let's try that. This piece works. We'll put a stop in it and cut a couple of more so they're exactly the same.
Okay, let's see here. One and a half. That's what that is. So, Basically the same thing I would do on a table saw is make a stop. So I just tack glued a piece of eighth inch on the wall there. It'll break out real simple. Run it up in there. Make sure we got the square side. Yep. Now you wouldn't think that your engine crutch or whatever was all that important. It's only something to hold the engine. Well, if you build your crutch crooked, twisted in a bind or whatever, it makes the motor run funny. And that's, we're only going to use three pieces. We're not going to, you know, like, back in the 90s, late 80s, 90s, I was building these, way over building these airplanes. I would put a solid piece of half inch from stem to stern on the thing, but you don't need it. Just break the piece out. Clean it up here. To build light airplanes, you have to leave parts off. Everybody's always, always over-engineering these things. Oh, it'll, it can't. It don't matter. Okay. Let's uh, clean the fuzz off this stuff. Too aggressive sandpaper. I don't want to take any size off, but I just want to clean the fuzz off. Of there we are. You can tell it's hard to work in a little spot like this. It's no bigger than a coffee table. But we'll get her done. Kind of important to have have those square the edges. Double square that end up there. Check this side. This was just a just a scrap piece that I I probably cut. So 
some nose blocks or whatever. We might use that for this anyway. You know, we're, we're talking about toilet paper. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a funny story. I was working for Harley Davidson, 9 11. And it hit, and the gas prices went from, I think it was about $1.40 a gallon to $5 a gallon. So when it hit $5 a gallon, the owner of the dealership, I don't know, took a 100-gallon roll caddy gas can and went, went and bought premium gas at $5 a gallon in a panic. The next day it was back down at $1.43. So all you guys are going to be eating toilet paper. Too much. Okay. Hey, big iron. Big Iron the Train Guy. You know, this YouTube channel started over the train guys. I didn't have a YouTube channel until I went into, was it Saint YouTube Modelers? They got a big railroad. They know me. They got a big railroad channel, and they taught me how to stream. Bunch of good guys. So if you're into trains, look at look up YouTube modelers. Okay, let's see how this is going to fare out. Perfect. See, it's as wide as the lugs, but I can cock that motor three degrees. That's just how I like it. You guys do it any way you want. That way I'm not fighting for line tension. Okay, so we got those parts cut. I guess I could just build me a kit instead of a starting to assemble. So we need to lay out, if I'm going to do that, we need to lay out the stab, rudder, and elevator. I also need to lay out uh, the bulkheads. Let's see, the first bulkhead is goes there. Goes behind the wing. All right. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, build my kit, so to speak. That way I can just whip it together. One, two, three. There's my engine bearers. Okay. 
They're held back. Held back and down set. I think I... Uh, yeah, I used 3 sixteenths on that, so I need to make a 3 sixteenths piece. Okay, how my crutches are made is this will sit on top of a 3 sixteenths piece of balsa wood. There'll be balsa fillers put in here because you don't want to sand into the hardwood. So you set the motor back away from the hardwood. And then it will be capped with 64th ply. So this makes a box, so to speak. Now you can do it any way you like, but that's just how I do it. Let me see if I got a piece of 316. Uh, got the chicken wings book. For you guys that like cartoons. <laughs> Three sixteenths. What have we got? Uh, Three sixteenths. Come on, guys. Band saw. So I only got one, is it one or two? That one's bowed. That one's bowed. I got one half inch square stick for the trailing edge. There we go. Stab. Okay, so this is the stab. And I can cut this in half. Even though it's bent, and make leading and leading edges, so that'll work. So those two pieces work. A piece of quarter here, or just three sixteenths. I think it's quarter, and it's not really big enough. Well, here's a piece of hard eight. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to make our own 3 sixteenths. And it'll be 10 times as strong as a regular piece of 3 sixteenths. Okay. Normally I wouldn't use a piece this hard in my airplane, but this is for the engine crutch, so we'll use that. Come on. Okay, we got through it. Now I'm going to take a piece of three uh, sixteenth. We're going to glue it at an angle like that. That thing will make it stiff as a board. So, let's 
seven. Don't want to use that at too light. We got any hard sixteenths. This all makes sense. And if not, you'll see it when it's done. It will. This is probably overkill. What am I doing? Goes like that. Goes like that. Okay. I'm sorry they don't have somebody to to talk with like our normal Saturday shows, but what can I do? What can I do? Okay, we're going to need one more piece, looks like. So I can get the end off each one. You know, I saw somebody on the forum. I made my own balsa plywood. Was so proud of himself. This is eight. What happened to my teeth? There it is. I don't want that. Come on. Almost cut it out of one piece out of eight. That would have been a disaster. Okay.
And if you're that guy, more power to you. Okay. Let's attack uh, it. Tag it. Tag it. Now, I got to ask you guys, what would you glue this with? It's pretty heavy, actually. Let's see what it weighs. I may not use it, it's kind of heavy. Yeah, we're not going to use that. That's too heavy. 5.55. Five, five. Five, five. Or 5. 5.5. Five, five. Or 10. Yeah, it's too heavy. Damn. What am I going to do for 3 sixteenths? Nah, I got a piece. Except this is pretty heavy stuff too. This piece of wood is 4.44, see, 3 sixteenths by 4 by 48. I hate to use it. Let's see how many grams it is, and then I'll figure it out. If it's 5, pound, it's five or 6 pounds, I'll use it. Eighty grams. Eighty grams. So we're not going to use these. This is, I know this is too heavy. So let's see what this calculates out to. Eighty grams. I use Balsa calculator on the site. All the time. That belongs to the control line racing guys. I wish I could get the uh, program from them. So we got 80 grams. 80 grams. Length is uh, that was a 48. 48, that was 4 inches, 3 sixteenths, 3 sixteenths, calculate, yeah, it's kind of heavy too, 8 and a half pound wood, or is that 9 pound, no, that's 8 and a half, 8.47 pound wood, no good. Let's let's see what this calculates out to. So it uh, should be a foot long. Yeah, twelve by three. Let's see what that calculates out to. Plus, I got to add glue on it, so it's going to be even heavier than that. Twelve by three by three sixteenths. Twelve. One, two, three. Let's see what it weighs. I forgot to weigh it. <clears throat> 
17 grams. I just know that's too heavy. Seventeen. Yep, nine and a half pound wood. Can't use that. So this is going in the trash. Well, I won't. I'll use it for a bulkhead, I guess. Now, a lot of guys, and I do mean a lot of guys, will just say, well, that's no big deal. We'll just go ahead and use that piece of wood. Don't. If you want to build light airplanes, don't. Because it, you cannot build light airplanes by adding heavy parts. See here. Okay, you see me just uh, kind of chill out a piece of wood there. And I, what am I going to do? Huh. Well, I got, I'm stumped. I'm stumped. Man, I got to get this picture hung up Gary Sinclair sent me. Even this piece feels heavy. Eighth inch, but it, it feels heavy. That feels heavy. Yeah. Man, I know I've got a piece here. I just don't see my big battery. <laughs> I'm going to be making a big battery out of this. We'll take, uh, put a bottom on it, take a battery like this, put it inside, wire it up with terminal clips on it, reduce the voltage, <laughs> and make a never-ready battery. Just, I don't know. Just something to do. Got so many somethings, I just don't have enough time. Uh oh, wait a minute. Aha! Piece of three sixteenths. Let's see what it weighs. Has to, it has to be good because I've used it for something. So if, it, if it's in the five or six pound range, we can use it. If it's, it's in the nine pound range, there's no way. Okay, let's see what it uh, what the measurements are. You dog.
That's what you get for not having enough room to work. Won't hurt anything, but kind of a pain. Hey, there goes the toilet paper. <laughs> crap ourselves to death. So this is 17 and a half inches long, four inches wide. Let's see what it weighs. Kind of feels heavy. 23. 17 and a half. Twenty three, seventeen and a half by four. Yep, we'll use that piece. That piece is six and a half pound wood. It's it's right on the edge, but we'll go ahead and use that. That's about as close as I'm going to get. So let's cut that up. Yeah, this piece here is rock wood, boy. I got a lot of. I got a lot of RC wood. <laughs> Where did my other motor mount go? There it is. is good. Still got a piece left over. Okay. Now, I'd rather this been five pound wood, but it is in the nose, so normally airplanes are going to come out tail heavy. Even at 58 ounces, you know, they're right on the edge of being tail heavy, so a couple of grams in the nose won't kill me. So let's mark it out and get my top of my crutch piece. I'm going to hold it back and leave a, about a sixteenth of an inch hanging over. For the simple fact you can sand it square and that will leave a nice flat edge when you glue it up to this so when you round over you don't have a hole you don't have to fill you don't have to fill anything with super fill and as a modeler aircraft modeler we're continuously battling the shrinkage in the nose even though I fiberglass the nose Unless those, I mean, those joints have to be perfect. You cannot transition 
from balsa to hardwood. Okay, I left a sixteenth of an inch hanging over here too, so that when I glue this all together, I can stand it up on its edge and block sand it. So here we go. Everybody always asks me, you have plans for that? No. <laughs> There's no plans, it's all out of my head. So that's the top piece, or the, yeah, the top of the crutch. The inside of the crutch will be 64th plywood. I'll probably wait until I can grind an eighth of an inch out of the bearers so that I can drop my tank, or actually it's raised the tank, up an eighth of an inch so you have room to shim the tank up and down. These are different sizes, only by a, only by a little bit. But it don't take much. Get them all the same size, I guess. Now, how did I know it was the same size? wasn't the same size? I put it together and that thing rocked. And you don't want that thing, you don't want the crutch in any twist whatsoever. So this is two. This is one. That's three. Yep, when I glue them together, that'll be perfect. Okay, so where are we at here? This is scrap. So our kit is fuselage sides, doublers, crutch. The stab trailing edge, the stab leading edge. Wow, is that thing, a, if you look down there, that thing is a snake. Boom, but I'll, I'll cut each end out of it. And get a leading edge out of it, so that's okay. So... What does my airplane weigh so far? You go, what? <laughs> how come you leave your motor in it? Well, I want to know how much everything weighs along the way. We got four ounces. Let's see here. Come on. Four and a half ounces. So the wings come out at four. That's eight. Plus the bell crank is nine. Everything has to weigh under 23 ounces be before you start putting paint on it in order to come out at that 58 ounce range. So you got four and a half. We're going to lose a little bit on this. So let's uh, 
Let's do this. Uh, let's see if we can find my dressmaker's tape. Yep, there it is. Okay, we're going to start cutting off some parts here. Twenty-six, twenty-eight 28 inches. 28 inches. So we're going to lose a little bit on that. So that's good. So when you're make, cutting your trailing edge out of this thing, you want to get the straightest end of the stick. Now I've showed this before where the sticks have different weight on each end. You look here, there's a, a brown spot or a knot. Now, would you say that's the lighter end or the heavier end? Of course, you got to get it. This is a really straight stick, though. So, now, Ed's Covina Hobby, I used to go into Ed's, and the guy would look over the counter. You boys putting fingernails in the wood again? You can tell the weight of the wood by taking your fingernail and forcing it into the end and making a fingernail mark like that. Now that was pretty tough to push in there. Let's see if this end. This is the hard end. So we're going to cut. That's just like I thought too, but I wanted to double check. We're going to cut our 28 inches out of this end. And then I need to cut two 14 inch pieces out of the other. What did I do with the miter box? There it is. You boys putting fingernails in the wood? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, we just cut off that much weight. Yeah, that's a good piece there. So we want to mark it at 14 inches. That's the mean center. And we'll use the dressmaker's tape. Close enough, not building the watch. Now we're going to mark it for which way it's going to lie. I think it would be best to have it this end, like this T E N. T E in. Okay, so now cut a couple leading edges. Even though they taper back, we'll cut them at 15. That way it'll give me a lot, enough uh, material to sand the angle in correct. But you want to kind of look here. This is the hard end. You want to put the hard end to the outboard. So we want, let's say, 14 and a half. That'll be good enough. 14 and a half. And if I can't get two pieces of straight out of this, I got another piece. So we'll get one piece or one elevator stabilizer out of this. That's 14 and a half.
keep checking your work make sure that you know what you're doing so this is a this was the le out le out board Okay, see if we can get another piece out of this. If it's see, this is a little hooped. So let's see if we got another piece of that. See if you don't think I mean look here, make sure that you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, Hey, it's you here. Yes, the balsa calculator button is on the top banner. You hit that, it takes the it takes you to the racing website. He has the program installed on his server. I'd like to get it from him, but I don't know him. So anybody knows him, I would run that program hosted on Stunhanger. Yeah, we're going to have to use this piece. You boys putting fingernails in the wood? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, there's the, so this is a, let's see here. We want to use it this way. Now this is half by half. L E N. Board. Okay, so we got the outboard, the inboard, and the trailing edge of the stab. We could put that together pretty quick because it's just a slab stab. Hopefully, I, get, I didn't make a mistake. That's 28. Of course, I can make it up on the tips, but I have to find some decent half. Okay. Yep, no mistakes. Good. Okay. Now, I've been building these stab and elevators for, for years this way. I, I don't know. Is there a lighter way to do it? I built them all different ways. I got a couple of tries over here. Here's a here's a molded a molded elevator or stabilizer. And the reason I didn't use it is I ended up sanding it low in here. I mean I could take it apart, but it doesn't matter how I build these. Remember, this is all molded. This is hollow and all molded. 
And we're going to build a, a flat plate stab for this one, but this right here weight should weigh about an ounce and a half. One point three ounces. It doesn't matter how I build them, whether they're foam, molded, built up. They always are three ounces for for a stab this side. That includes the hinges and the horn as well. But they're three ounces. I don't care what you do; <laughs> it's going to be three ounces. So it doesn't. This is a, this was. If you look back at some of my older videos, this was an exotic experiment. You know, I I made a plug I mold this is all one piece molded around a thing and then I put ribs inside there it was just a big pain in the rear and I didn't get anything out of it so we're done playing that game I also if, if you look back when the original series started on uh, the, the uh, Tucker XL I was over John's we were cutting a foam core for a geodesic stabilizer. And I have them laying right down there. But after looking at it, I'm going to go through all that work and it's still going to be three ounces. So why bother? So don't kill yourself making a stab an elevator for a big airplane. It's going to be three ounces regardless. I'd be almost willing to bet if it was a composite, it would be three ounces. And then you paint it. No, I mean, I built one lighter. I used uh, 15 thousandths or just seven thousandths. Let's measure this. This is uh looks like nine thousand. So it's probably ten thousand. Yeah, it's ten thousand. This is ten thousand carbon fiber. And it's a uh, sheet and you, it, you can cut it off or what it's it's extremely strong for something. I built that elevator stabilizer and I use this as a backer on the trailing and leading edges where you glue this and it make, makes it extremely strong but I didn't lose any weight <laughs> so I don't know I got that from a from aerospace composites and I got the idea from watching Billy in the uh, building of the I-beam wing video, don't waste your time. <laughs> it's not worth it. As far as I'm concerned, the old ways from the 60s and 70s is better. It's better than what they're trying to do now. Carbon veil. There takes so much paint to fill that carbon veil. One thing that I am doing here that I do like better is Randy Smith's idea of carbon veil doublers in the fuselage. Is it lighter? I don't know. But is it is it as strong? I don't know. Is it? An advantage or a disadvantage? There is an advantage, and that's why I continue to do it. And the advantage is, is when you sand between the fuselage side, through the veil, through the doubler, into the filler block to the nose ring, there's not a hard plywood line. And that glue, after you fiberglass the nose, won't sink as bad. However, anytime you have a laminated surface, one to the next, any difference in hardness is going to leave a line. It takes a lot of work to get it out. And I've 
I use super fill on it and they you can't see it still sinks. It, you just just a pain in the butt. Okay, so let's see where we are now with what we've done. We have the uh, spars for the wing, snakes for the wing, and four of those, but they, they straighten right out. Now I had that 3 16 so I guess I can use 8th inch shear web instead. I'm not going to buy any more material for this airplane. I, I mean, I don't even live where I'm at. This I just stay where I, this is where I work. This place is really small, and it's getting really cramped with airplanes. <laughs> but, uh... I do it because there's nothing else to do. I don't drink. Too old to chase women. They cost too much anyway. So I play with toys. Let's see what we got for weight now. Let's add these four spars on it. I think Clark Gable's going to fly this airplane. And if you think I'm kidding, I'll show show them to you. 4.6 ounces, but I added more wood, so that's good. 4.6. I still need. I'm going to cut a head off and turn them. But here is Clark Gable. Da da da. -da. Tommy Looper does a fine job on pilots. Okay. Well, I'm kind of getting burnt out. Let's see how long we've been running. One hour, 40 minutes. Mike, I have one daughter. She's 44 years old. So, no, I don't have kids. <laughs> now, this wood here, I've weighed, I've selected, sorted, and weighed, graded all my remaining wood. This wood here. This, like eight grams for this, eight grams, eight grams. You can look it up on the, let's see what a sixteenth by uh, three by thirty six, eight grams is. Grams, 36, 36, 3, cat phrase 1. Yeah, this, this wood here is four and a half pound wood here. Eight, eight, eight. These are these are the ribs. Eight, eight. I mean, there's way more material than I need for ribs. I don't, I don't think I'm going to use six sheets. But this is four and a half pound wood. I'll use the best out of it. 
And then I have, uh, yeah, I got a lot of 16th, four and a half pound wood. We might just build the whole thing out of 16th, depending whether I get foam leading edges or not. But if I don't, I'll use this as the sheeting. And this is uh, 332nd. And that's, uh, let's see, that one is 14. These are 14, 332. Let's see what they weigh. Yeah, 14 at 332nd. Are they four inch? And they're four inches wide. So they're super light. 14. 14 by 4. Come on. By 4. 3. 32. Those pieces of wood are 3.95 pounds. These will be, I don't know, I might calculate it out. I might use them for the ribs too. This is all 3.95 wood. It's four inches wide by 332 by 36 long is 3.95 pounds. So that's where you want to be. You don't you don't want to if you're going to build light airplanes, you don't want to start off with heavy wood. It just doesn't work that way. And I don't care what anybody says. Let's see here. Let's see here. I hope you guys got something out of today's show. I mean, it's kind of boring. Yeah, yeah, but is the internet going to shut down? The country shuts down, I'll build a couple airplanes. I won't be searching for toilet paper. <laughs> so we got some good wood to work with. Three and four pound wood. So as I stated, if you're going to build light airplanes, you need light wood. All right, guys, I think I'm going to call it a day. I appreciate you watching. Uh, help keep the channel alive. If you can do a super chat, you don't have to do it today, or a donation on Stun Hanger or whatever. I usually end up giving the, the excess to Rusty, so that helps me pay him. I hope you enjoyed the show. Like, subscribe, share the videos. And until I see you again, fair winds, tight lines. See you.